So welcome on Pre Calc. Today we're going to start with talking about the tennis ball lab. And I'd love it if you would go into the Schoology folder where you will find the tennis ball lab in the folder called labs. It's yellow, the folder is. And when you go inside, you should find the uh, folder that specifically says tennis ball lab. And I think it says complete on it. So while you're opening that up, uh, I'm just going to start here. and I'd like you to, uh, first of all, cross off this last part. I had decided that uh, that part really didn't make sense because if you're really throwing the ball straight up, here's your parking lot, if you're really throwing the ball straight up, it's not going to go over and down into the parking lot. And so uh, it. I just thought it, it, it really doesn't make sense if you're throwing it straight up in the air. So... Uh, I am eliminating part C to keep your life just a little simpler. Um, and let's just go over some of the basics so that I have all of the kind of the advice in one spot here. Um, first off, if you have y equal to negative 4.9 x squared, you've got the start of an upside down parabola. And do you know what x and y are? If I make a sketch of this thing, your parabola is like this. Your x is going to be your time, and your y is going to be the height. We can't examine more than one variable at a time. So, yes, uh, the ball might be going a distance from you, like horizontally, but we tried to throw it straight up in the air. So, now this is your starting height, your initial height. Uh, right there, and so in the formula, that's going to be uh, coming at the end. In the middle here, we have this plus bx, and then we have a plus c at the end. This would be your velocity, your the initial velocity, uh, and this is your starting height. Or initial height. So of course we know that right here and I told you guys that you could all use two meters and since this number is in meters we've got to be consistent and always use meters and so really that means that you have x which is any given time so if you want to figure out where the ball would be at one minute sorry one second you would just stick a one right there uh, and you'd be able to tell where exactly the ball would be on its path, you know, as it's going up and back down again. Uh, so what else would you need? You'd probably need the velocity. So I don't want to tell you how to do the lab, but the advice I've given you so far is that we know that this spot right here is the vertex, and that's given by a formula that I will remind you about negative b over 2a, that's the x of the vertex. And then I'd like you to think for a moment about what the other part of the vertex would be. So I'm going to have you pause the video for a second and think about what's the other part of that vertex. All right, you should have said that it was f of negative b over 2a. You put that number back in the function. All right, so negative b over 2a, great, Mr. Server, but what? how am I supposed to find b? I mean, we know a, it's given, uh, but we don't know b. You're right, that's the whole challenge. Once you figure out b, then you could tell where the ball is at any moment. And so if you tried to use this in your equation, uh, you'd find that the equation really doesn't tell you much. It's just that the height, which is going to be 2 at the starting height, and the time would be 0. You know, this x would be 0, and this x would be 0. That spot really doesn't tell you much. And this spot we can't do unless we have b. So that leaves you just one spot left. And obviously this is the important spot. Now, you're going to have to do this in the context of a lab. And I don't want to tell you any more, so... Uh, you've got to figure out the vertical speed, which is the B, uh, with which you threw the ball. 
and you're going to use initial height being C, uh, two, sorry, C is two. And then you gotta figure out the max height of the ball that you threw, all right? So pretty simple. Uh, the main meat of this is going to be in your uh, calculation. So the purpose, those two things are what we're trying to figure out and say it in your own words. Uh, the sketch, make sure that you include labels and stuff. The procedure, uh, this is where you say in words what you did to complete this lab. Calculations, that's where you're going to actually do equations and solve those equations and really show your work. And then under conclusion and reflection, uh, that's where we're going to restate here is the answer to our question, the purpose for the lab. The answers to that, they need to be here, even if you figured them out further up. And then last but not least, reflections, where you do three things. We always do three math-centered things that you learned, one of which could be uh, something about how to improve this lab. So, all right. There's a just brief go over on the lab. And now I'd like to uh, do a couple of problems related to quadratics. I mean, this whole unit is about quadratics. And so let's just talk about, you know, what should you be able to do with a quadratic? All right, so if I give you this quadratic, y equals negative 4.9, uh, t squared, don't let it alarm you that I've changed it from x to t, just to swap there. And if I say plus 2t, that's like, oh, so you know that you threw the ball at a velocity of 2 meters per second. And then this time I'm going to start with a starting height of 1 meter off the ground. All right. So if that's my equation. I'd like you to use your calculator and figure out where that ball would be at time 0.5. At one half of a second, where would that ball be? All right, everybody give this a shot. You can use a calculator. If you need to, you can use a calculator uh, on your iPad um, to do this. Uh, but of course, because we're in a classroom, Phones would not be an appropriate way to use uh, to, to use at this point. All right, pausing for a second while you give that a try. Okay, so you add a 0.5 that you're going to put in for T. So all you had to do is put it right there and put it right there. Type it in your calculator, and you should have come up with Y equals 0.775. Now I'm going to draw this, and I strongly recommend that. Draw your parabola like this. And try to figure out, do you think that this number here was my amount on the way up? Or was this when the ball was on the way down? You should process that. Talk to the person across from you. You know I always have a person right next to you that I want you to compare notes with. Talk to them about, was that 0.775, that's a height, was it at that height on the way up, or is it at that height on the way down at the time is 0.5? And if you don't know, how could we figure it out? Okay, so some things I hope you thought of. This height right here was at one meter. It started one meter off the ground. So if at a half of a second, the ball was at 0.775, then obviously we threw the ball up, so the ball would start off going up, right? So then this must ball must have been on the way back down again if it's below point seven if it's below uh, one meter. So this is less than one meter, so it had to be when it was on its way back down again that it hit that. So. Another pertinent spot would be, can you figure out when the ball is at its peak? I'd like you to try to figure out right now, when was the ball at its peak? That's the vertex. We talked about where you find that, right? 
So talk to the person next to you after you've had a chance to calculate it. When did the ball reach its peak? Okay, now I know some kids probably had a chance to argue with the person next to them because if you type this in wrong on your calculator, you'll get deceived about what time that was. I hope you know that the x of it is at negative b over 2a because that is the key formula here. Okay, negative b over 2a. So let's take what negative b is, which is negative 2. And again, if you're putting this in a calculator, you've got to be sure to get the negative key, which is down by the enter key, not the minus key. Negative 2 over 2 times a, which is negative 4.9. If you screw up your parentheses, you get the wrong answer there. This one comes out to 0 0.20. 0 0.2048, 408, anyway, 0 0.20. That is the time when it reached its peak. All right, so now everybody figure out the other part of the vertex. We now know this is the vertex, and it is at 0 0.20, at 0 0.2 of a second. Very quickly, it reaches its peak. And then what's the other part of the vertex? I'll pause for a second while you figure that one out. Okay, you should have been at 1.20. So that is the time. And this is the height. So it only went up to just 1.2 meters. Didn't go up very high. It's because you threw it really weakly. You know, 2 meters per second is, it is a really weak throw. This velocity here. Okay, so it didn't go up very high. Now, we're going to figure out this spot. Now, a lot of people think that that's how far away the ball was from you when it landed. But remember, this is time down here. So this is the time that the ball hit the ground. And you should know what formula gives you that time. So give it a shot. Figure out what time did that ball hit the ground. If it helps, remember that at that moment, the height is zero, and the time is the only thing we don't know. I'll pause again while you give it a shot. Okay, so I'll show you how I figure this out. I'm using the quadratic formula because... If you can factor it, you should, but this thing isn't going to factor with a negative 4.9 in it, right? So then I'm going to go to this. x equals negative b, which would be negative 2, plus or minus the square root of b squared, which is 2 squared, which is 4, minus 4 times a times c, and our a is negative 4.9. Sorry, that's really small negative 4.9, and then c, which is 1, all over 2a, over 2 times negative 4.9. Okay, so as I'm figuring this out, on the top I get 2.86, because I had to choose you know, plus and minus, so I'm choosing plus. And I choose plus, and I get 2.86 on the top, divided by 2 times negative 4.9, and I get negative 0.29, and x is time, so then I get a time that's negative. What is going on? Actually, what goes on is you're finding this answer, because the parabola, theoretically, would have two answers. We know it only hit the ground once, so this answer that came out negative had a time of negative 0.2, Nine, I believe, yep. Um, that is called an extraneous answer. And if you any of you got unlucky enough to get that answer, it's because you chose to do the negative two plus. Now you gotta try negative two minus the square root of all that all over two times negative 4.9. So I'm gonna pause while I try that. 
And the final answer for the time when the ball hit the ground is 0.6997, pretty much rounds to 0.7 seconds. So would you have to do something like that? Yeah, you have to know how to use all of these formulas for the circle. All right, so let's talk about another type of question that you would have to know how to do. Everybody, start fresh and draw another upside down parabola for parabolic motion. You learned this last year in honors, if you were in honors, higher algebra. All right, so now I have, uh, I should know all of the formulas that go with these spots. And this one was a quadratic formula. This one's the negative b over 2a for the x part of it, and then you plug it back into the rest of the function. And that's just the y-intercept of your formula, right? Okay, so let's say that this is starting at uh, 3 meters this time, and it has quite a bit faster velocity. The velocity is 10 meters per second, the initial velocity. And then my question could be any of these things, but I'd like to this time say, instead of saying at time is one second or at time is half of a second, where is the ball? Instead, I'm gonna say at four meters, you know, right above three meters, obviously the ball would have gone since we threw it fairly fast, up to four meters, and it would have then gone up to its peak, whatever that was, and it would have come back down to four meters. I want you to try to set up an equation that would involve the y being four, and what, what formula would do that for you? Is that the vertex formula? No, that's not gonna be a vertex. All right. Talk to your partner about what formula could possibly work for this. Pausing. Well, since I eliminated the vertex uh, formula, because it's obviously not at the vertex, right? Then the only other big formula we have is the quadratic formula. x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. And can that be it? That just tells us an x value. Oh, but wait a minute. It tells us an x value, but it doesn't tell us anything about the y value. And we need to tell this thing that at the y value of four, we want two numbers. So how on earth do you get the y value of four in there? Well, there is one other equation, the starting equation for this whole thing. y equals and I'm going to just give you the, the uh, direct to the answer part. Negative 4.9 t squared plus 10 t plus 3. That's the equation you can write for this thing. You know where I got the 10 from? Because I told you the velocity was 10. You know where I got the negative 4.9? We always use that if we're using meters and we're on the earth, so it has to do with gravity. And where'd you get the three from? Because we said that this was going to have a starting height of three. And then that's where you could put in a y value. We can put in a y value of four because we want this height to be four. I put it right there. But I thought you said, Mr. Server, that we're always supposed to set the quadratics equal to zero. So talk to your partner, try to figure out what we're supposed to do next then to be able to solve this quadratic. Okay, hope it didn't take you too long to figure out that we're going to subtract four from both sides. And now we'll have zero equals negative 4.9t squared plus 10t and then minus one. All right, and I know that feels wrong because you're like, but wait, now the starting 
uh, height is negative 1. Nope, it's not. We just took an equation that was correct. It was set equal to 4. And so effectively, it's like you're shifting the whole thing. It's all right. We're, we're doing it right. We'll get the answer. We'll be what? It'll be times. You see how t is the only thing we have left? All right. So now we'll use the quadratic formula in our calculator to figure out the times. And should there be two times? Yup, because you have a plus and a minus in the formula, we'll get two times. All right, I'm gonna pause for a second while you guys figure out what are those two times. Use the quadratic formula. Okay, so you just stuck your numbers into the quadratic formula and you, after doing the one with the plus here, you would have gotten 0.105, I'm gonna round that to 0 0.11. Again, 0.105, round to 0.11, remember these are times. So that's the time that it reached four meters in the first place. And then I'm gonna do the whole quadratic formula with a minus here, all right? And for this one I get x equals 1.935, so I'm going to round it to 1.94. Clean this up a little bit, 1.94. And x is time again, right? So that would be the second time that the ball got to that height. All right. I know that was a challenge. There was a lot of using your calculator involved, but fundamentally it was just the starting equation and we put in a height of four because that's how high we wanted the ball to go. And then we did our quadratic formula to solve it because you have to set it equal to zero and then you'll have your quadratic and then you put it in your quadratic and you end up with two answers. All right, so. I want to take a little bit of time to do some review, uh, and we'll do the rest of the review tomorrow. So the first uh, review, since uh, you have your calculator out, just a reminder that you learned how to do a uh, linear regression. And just for the memories of it, would you hit the stat button on your calculator? And it'll remind you that edit, is where you find your lists. And if you put data into those two lists, uh, you can find a linear regression. So I'm gonna refer you to the video that I made on Friday, which is very thorough and goes over how to do that. Uh, basically, the, the, the super broad outlines would be if you have your X and your Y in L1 and L2, uh, you'd put in your data, like let's say here we had uh, 3, 4, and 5, and here we had 9, 10, and 11. You put your data in, then you hit the stat button again, and the arrow over to calculate, the calculate menu, and you're looking for lin reg. That's the linear regression, okay? So there's a reminder that you do have to know how to do linear regressions. Our full review day is tomorrow, so we'll talk more about that then. Uh, let's go to some other stuff that you are going to be expected to know how to do. Uh, let's do a interval x squared minus uh, 2x on the interval from 2 to 3. All right. Remember, this is not a point. This is an interval. And they'll be asking you for the average slope. Everybody find the average slope over that interval. I'll pause for a second and give that a try. Okay, so if you remember how these work, this is like a picture. We've got a quadratic, uh, and we're trying to figure out the slope of a part of it, where if I pick a spot here and a spot there, I'm finding a slope between those two. Uh, and they gave me the x values of those. Notice this was not a point, it was the x values. And then if this is like 2 and this is like 3, then I figure out what the y values would be. 
So I stick a 2 in here to see what the y value would be, and I get 4 minus uh, 4, and that's 0, so 2 comma 0. At the next point, when I put in a 3, I would have 3 squared is 9, minus 2 times 3 is 6, 9 minus 6 would be 3. And then to find the slope there, you just have to do the y2 minus the y1 over the x2 minus the x1, and that's going to be 3 minus 0 over 3 minus 2, so 3 over 1, so the slope was 3. That was the average slope over that interval. All right, quick reminder of uh, how to uh, handle slopes that are parallel and perpendicular and stuff. Let's say I have 3 fourths on this equation. If I wanted to be parallel to that, I would make another equation that would be 3 fourths. And then the y-intercept could be anything. And these two would be parallel because they have the same slope. Do you remember how to do perpendicular? All right, you would have said negative 4 thirds for a slope that would be perpendicular to that one. Okay, next up is, let's just see if you remember how to find a basic absolute value. Everybody find the answers to that one. Okay, you should have said it was x minus 10 equals 11, and x minus 10 equals negative 11. I'm adding 10 to both sides x equals 21, and adding 10 to both sides, and I get x equals negative 1. Now, let's say I just made one little tweak to this, and I said, oh, wait, I wanted it to be less than or equal to 11. Well, then this would have been a less than or equal to, less than or equal to, and this would have been a greater than or equal to. Why? Because we switched the sign on the 11. And this would be greater than or equal to. And then when I graphed it, remember that this is a sign that, oh yeah, I need to make a number line to get this because the answer will be a range of values. So here I have a negative 1, here I have a 21, and here is greater than or equal to negative 1 goes this way, and less than or equal to 21 would go that way. So in interval notation, negative 1 to 21. All right. For your homework for tonight, you are going to be uh, going over the main types of problems on a Schoology quiz. Uh, this is critical. The test is not tomorrow, but it's the next day. I strongly recommend that you practice all these things with that Schoology quiz uh, that I have created for you. And I wish you the best of luck. Have a great day.